Gompla. Bandai's line of mecha model kits based on the awe-inspiring, formidable mobile suits from the various Gundam universes. And every year I count down the best of the best, so you can snip, snap, paint, and panel line the perfect Gompla collection. But no matter what Gundam model kit you decide to buy, you can never go wrong. There's a reason Gompla remains Japan's, no, the world's favorite mecha model kits. 2021 was the leanest year for Gompla releases that I've seen in my almost 10 years of reviewing here on YouTube. The pandemic, impacted global supply chains and pressure on plastic injection materials, has affected our favorite hobby in ways like never before. This meant that supply outweighed demand and fewer and fewer kits were to be seen on shelves of your favorite hobby stores and online shops. Nevertheless, the gods among men over in the Gundam factory in Japan crafted some of the finest miniature mecha machinery that has ever graced a cutting mat, outdoing themselves in ways I never thought possible, and outdoing themselves once again this year. So before we get into the countdown, how about a little bit of a summary of how the year in Gompla went? In 2021, we saw less releases than ever with only 19 unique kits, 10 of which were high grade, 3 were real grade, 3 master grade, 2 entry grades, and 1 full mechanics. In 2020, it was the 40th anniversary of Gompla, so we saw some unique experimental new lines, like the Perfect Grade Unleashed and the Master Grade Extreme Unicorn. But last year in 2021, Bandai played it safe sticking to regular releases, standard lines, and only making suits from the most popular Gundam series. Iron-Blooded Orphans got one release, which was the Gundam Gremory, Gundam 00 got a single release, the Master Grade Virtue, Gundam Wing got two releases, the High Grade Death Scythe and the Real Grade Wing TV version. The new net series Gundam Breaker Batlog got four releases in Japan, which was the High Grade Helios, Live Lands Heaven, Blazing Gundam and the Perfect Strike Freedom. But it did get seven more if you count the US Target timed exclusive releases. Gundam Seed was second in popularity with five whole releases, the Early Grade Strike, the High Grade Dagger, Full Mechanics Calamity, Master Grade Jin, and Master Grade Eclipse. Finally, the original Gundam Universe, the Universal Century, got the lion's share with six releases. The Early Grade Oryx 78 2, High Grade Zaku 2, High Grade Nightingale, High Grade Sea Gundam, the Real Grade Zeong, and the Real Grade High New Gundam. That makes 15 actual Gundam Gundam kits and four non-Gundam kits. For the top 10 this year, I'm going to be taking the same 3A approach I've done my reviews in for the last decade. Aesthetics is the overall look, detail, and presence of the kit. Accessories is everything the kit comes with besides the mecha itself. We're talking guns, swords, beams, and effects. And articulation, how the kit busts a move, from bending limbs to joint strength to opening hatches and miscellaneous gimmicks. So yeah, let's get right into counting these down. Welcome to Mecha Guy Kotsu's Top Gundam Kits of 2021. Dropping into the 10th position like a colony in a target near you was the high-grade line of Gundam Breaker Batlog kits. I still vividly remember seeing the first tweet about early release Gundam kits in Target in the US. This is something we have never seen before. I have to hand it to Bluefin and Bandai Namco America for what they've done for Gunpla in the West, and to Bandai and Sunrise Japan to publish the anime online for everyone to watch for free. That's why this particular line of high grades have to be represented in this year's top 10. With my own personal choice of favorite from the bunch being Ryusei Fudo's Gundam Helios. Dynamic, eye-catching, and a combination of three absolutely gorgeous mobile suits, the Gundam Destiny, X, and Freedom. Also, I will mention that at this point yet, I have not seen the four recolors, the Barbatoris, or the fan favorite Command Quanta, which have not yet released in Japan. The high-grade Helios piloted by Ryusei Fudo from Gundam Breaker Batlog, released in Japan in November and retailed at $22. When it comes to the looks, the Gundam Helios is an absolute eye-catcher. Pale blue on pure white complemented by clear green and shiny green foil stickers. There are a few stickers in here, but not really for color correction per se, mainly just for the shiny green psycho frame on the wings. When you get in close, there's plenty of surface detail and panel lining opportunities. And to further the unique look and feel of the Helios' combo of Destiny, X, and Freedom, it has a robust, almost blocky design to the armor that gives it a formidable, powerful silhouette, which is framed by a pair of inverted Freedom wings. These add mass and make sure it will not go unnoticed in a crowd of Gompla. 
The Helios comes with a unique take on the standard Gundam loadout of sword, board and beam rifle. The sword is a pair of Gundam X-style beam swords with large, vigorous effect parts. The board is one of the smallest yet subtle vigorous beam shields. Lastly, the beam rifle comes straight from the astounding high-grade Destiny. If that wasn't enough DACA for you, the onboard weaponry form the Sextet Cannon, the satellite cannons up top, Freedom Wings below and Destiny's Palma Fiocchina at the hands. Sadly, I will mention though that the effects from the high-grade Destiny for the Palma Fiocchina are not included. Lastly then, when it comes to the articulation, the Helios is a decent buster of moves with the best aspects being the overall fluid feel of the kit, mixed with the hugely dynamic wings of the Freedom Gundam. However, this kit will need a couple of joints tightened in order to be the best posing experience out of the box. And lastly then, who is this kit for? Well, if you're looking for a simple to build kit that's fun, a dynamic hybrid of three iconic Gundams that keeps its equipment compact and vigorous, you might just be looking for the high-grade Helios. When it comes to 1-100 Gundam kits, Master Grade is the undisputed king. But by the almighty ball, the Full Mechanics Calamity Gundam is the first non-Master Grade 1-100 sucker punch that I was not expecting. While not the first ever Full Mechanics kit to make it into one of my best Gunpla lists, it finally fully delivers on what Bandai aimed to achieve starting with the Reborn 100 line. A 1-100 kit that is simple on the inside but will match perfectly with a Master Grade collection on the outside. This kit almost builds like a big high grade but with way more payoff. Criticized somewhat by fans for being somewhat expensive, this kit brings jaw-dropping looks, master grade compatibility, and a fairly solid no-polycap build. The Full Mechanics Calamity Gundam, piloted by Orga Sabnak from Gundam Seed, released in June, retailed at around $47. Into the aesthetics, and when you first clap your eyes on the Calamity, the first thing you're going to see is the color. This thing is electric. Yellow on green isn't entirely unique in the Gundam universes, but the vivid color on this plastic is like nothing I have ever seen before. This kit may build up somewhat like a big high-grade kit, meaning a lot of simple parts, but Bandai did make sure to put the detail where it counts. And this kit has detail in truckloads. The surfaces are detailed, the color separation is super impressive, and we even get some nice sticker decals in here to complement the finished look. This is not a subtle-looking Gundam by any means. When it comes to the accessories, the Calamity brings the long-range carnage with a Germanic flair, each boasting moving parts and color separation on par with the mobile suit itself. You get a pair of Schlag, massive backpack cannons mounted around on the backpack, the Totus Block, Bazooka as the primary handheld weapon, and the shield rocking the Kafer Zwei dual cannons. To make things even better, Bandai made sure to keep this kit compatible with the Master Grade Seed line of kits meaning this kit can hold their weapons unmodified and can sort of be equipped with the Freedom 2.0's wings, but that will require a little bit of modding to make them fit flush. The only letdown when it comes to the accessories in here is the impotent base adapter that has trouble holding the kit up in aerial poses. Finally then, when it comes to the articulation, for a full mechanics kit, the Calamity is a sturdy little beast which is a direct result of its no-polycap build. And just in case you're not familiar with what that means, Polycaps are little rubbery joints found in Gundam kits. They're a one-size-fits-all solution to holding a moving kit together that can often lead to a kit being floppy if integrated into the build poorly. This kit features plastic on plastic joints, so that does mean the Calamity does a great job of supporting its own bulk. The articulation we get in here is outstanding with some impressive joints, especially at the torso giving the Calamity the ability of pulling off some incredibly organic poses. But I will mention you will have to be careful not to knock off those delicate waist skirting armors. So if you are looking for a kit that's over the top and in your face with a simple build but huge payoff, then you need a full mechanics Calamity Gundam. It's the best non-master grade 1-100 kit I have ever built. At number 8 with an ass big enough for my dog to wear as a hat, the high-grade Nightingale must be the biggest non-mobile armor mobile suit around. This kit is a centerpiece to the Red Comet himself, and like most centerpieces, this kit prioritizes size and spectacle over articulation and posability. 
This is a simple build made mainly of large parts, so even if you're a beginner, don't be put off by the intimidating size of the box. If you can find one, that is. This is a kit that pretty much sold out instantly, and you can see why. The high-grade Nightingale, piloted by Shar Aznable from Shar's counterattack Bell Tort Chica's Children, released in July, retailing at $67. Big Red The two words that sum up this scalded behemoth. Like a big angry prawn, this is one of the most Xeonic mobile suits to ever exist. There is nothing else out there like this in the world of Gompla, besides, well, the 1-100 version. Huge, flat, curved surfaces, pointy bits everywhere, 1 million thrusters, Xeon incarnate. Unless your high-grade collection is rocking some serious mobile armors, this will stand out beyond anything else. Its unique shape abandons the typical humanoid look of most mobile suits, which gives it an unsettling, menacing aura. And it has a fat cock. I see what you did there, Shar. The Nightingale comes with the usual mobile suit loadout on steroids. A giant beam tomahawk, beam sabers that can also be held by sub-arms under the gonads, a huge mega beam rifle with fold-out bipod, and a gigantic shield as big as the Master Grade Sazabees. Due to the nature of the kit, the handheld weaponry can be a little bit on the awkward side, but on the whole, extremely impressive. Sure, this kit is a little bit of a statue, but thankfully this is a double-edged sword, or should I say double-edged beam tomahawk, because just like a statue, this kit is as solid as a rock. The individual parts on this kit do boast some great joints and a lot of movement, it's just that they tend to interfere with each other once it's all put together. But there is plenty in here to get a couple of moves out of this kit, but you are limited mainly to just a couple of poses. Thankfully, the huge thruster binders and very poseable arms keep those poses from being too sterile. Also, I will mention this beast requires not one, but two action bases to hold it barely in the air. So if you're a worshipper of Shar Aznable who prefers display over play, then the high-grade Nightingale is the perfect addition to your altar to the Red Comet. From high-grade huge to high-grade tiny and from over-the-top to very much down-to-earth, at this 7th spot is the most enjoyable grunt suit I have ever built. Hovering just over the $10 mark, the high-grade Dagger L is almost at the Army Builder sweet spot when it comes to price. However, unlike most Army Builder kits that are designed to be built quickly to fill out your 144th scale mecha ranks, this kit actually repurposes a main suit. So there's a whole bunch of parts from 2013's Build Strike Gundam, but with some nice updates including an impressive torso. While not for everyone, those who love grunts, especially gym-style grunts, need this kit, or maybe 10, in their life. It is simplicity perfected. The high-grade Dagger L from Gundam Seed Destiny released in April and retailed for just over $11. What might look to most people like Strike Gundam's conservative brother, the Dagger L doesn't rock the same over-the-top appeal that the Gundam moniker brings. But there is pure poetry in this kit's simplicity. Off-white with a muted variant of the usual Gundam color scheme, it is the perfect, low-key tribute to the unsung soldier. It would be an easy mistake to make to consider this a high-grade Strike Gundam with a gym head, because this actually rocks a better build than the kit that it's based on. Just like its looks, the accessory spread in here is very basic. It's beam sabers, a shield, and a beam rifle. And yeah, all of which are just as exciting as they look. But it is this simplicity that begets their diamond reliability. If you're posing up 20 of these bad boys as part of a huge battle diorama, the last thing you want is a shield with 40 gimmicks, fragmenting into pieces, resulting in you knocking the entire squad over like a big line of bipedal dominoes. So sometimes, simplicity is perfect. However, if you are allergic to the simple, then the Dagger L does boast full compatibility with high-grade striker packs and weaponry. And there is also a P-Bandai add-on pack if you really need to bring the Dagger L Thunder. When it comes to the build and the articulation, the Dagger L once again is simplicity perfected. Super solid with all-round great articulation inherited from the Build Strike. Unlike the Build Strike and the Ale Strike revive based on that kit, this kit has a new redesigned torso giving it an overall posability well beyond its pay grade, topping even what we would have seen from last year's astounding high-grade Wyndham. So if you're the kind of builder that has no time for the screaming, wailing, and tears inside the cockpit of the Strike Gundam and want to fly the flag of the unsung explosions in the background, then you might want one or even ten of the high-grade Dagger L.
spiraling to the earth below prime to self-detonate in the sixth position is the real grade wing gundam tv version now the fact that a modern real grade kit is in the bottom half of this list proves that even though the quantity of gundam kits released this year has been reduced the quality sure hasn't Truthfully speaking, this was my number 5 in the list, but I moved it so that at least one high grade would end up in the top 5. But in my heart, this is number 5. And also just for those who may not know what a real grade is, the long but short of it is, these kits are the same small scale as high grade but packing in the cutting edge of mecha model kit technology. A full inner frame, top quality plastics, and in my opinion, they have become the best line of Gompla in recent years. All of what I just said goes for the real grade wing as well. A very nice and ridiculously inspired build with so much packed into a tiny package. This kit also features the only transformation to bird mode that I've ever actually enjoyed, and that says a lot. The real grade wing Gundam piloted by Hiro Yui from Gundam Wing was released in June retailing at $30. The minute you drag your ocular organs across this majestic beauty, you realize that this isn't exactly the wing Gundam TV version that graced your screen back in the Toonami days. With this kit, real grade did what real grade does, and that is to redesign this 90s classic to look like what it would look like if it existed in real life. So a lot of these stylistic wing elements have been modernized, resulting in a kit that is both flashy yet elegant. Two shades of white and impressive color separation, no color correcting stickers as the real grade standard demands, and a large sheet of sticker decals that are quite nice but I will mention I do miss the fitted stickers of real grade past. A couple of standout features to me are the ability to spread out the wings in a bird-like fashion and a distinct, intense Gundam glare. When it comes to the accessories, the wing continues to impress. Once again in here we get the traditional Gundam loadout of beam saber, beam rifle and shield, but once again these have been tuned to the heights of the real grade standard. Incredible parts separation, design and execution. Both the buster rifle and the shield feature gimmicks that allow them to open up with the rifle it's for the ammo and with the shield it's for storage for the kit's one beam saber once again the real grade wing absolutely maxes out the awesome meter when it comes to the build strength and articulation and this is even a kit that packs in a transformation to flight form tons of over-the-top articulation packed into a minuscule package and it never drops the ball especially due to those locking wrist joints this kit is also so sturdy that you wouldn't even notice that it transforms when it is in mobile suit mode. But it does in fact have a mind-blowing fluid transformation to bird mode that I can honestly say that I love going through. It's streamlined, solid and seamless. Also making this kit awesome is the fact that it features locking knees which prevent any unwanted untransforming when it's in either mobile suit mode or bird mode. Nothing goes where you don't want it to go. So yeah, this kit may get lost in a shelf due to its small size, but whether you're a Gundam Wing fan or not, this is the perfect small-scale transforming mecha masterpiece. Bursting forth from an iron chrysalis in mid-atmospheric entry towards number 5 in this list is the Alpha Chad of all mobile suits to wear the title Gundam. To me, the HG Kusi Gundam was the best high-grade offering in 2021, making it worthy of a spot in the top 5 of this list. This kit is huge. You could plop this in with a bunch of Master Grade kits and you wouldn't even notice it in there. Just like the high-grade Penelope from last year, this kit rocks an over-the-top, pointy, bulky aesthetic. But unlike that kit, the Kusi Gundam doesn't feature a finicky flight unit or fall under its own weight. And if you were tossing up between the two, this is the kit that I would recommend. The high-grade C Gundam was piloted by Mafti from Gundam Hathaway, and it released in April, retailing at a spicy $57. When it comes to the looks of this kit, this is monolithic and will dominate a high-grade display. The only real down point with this kit is we do have a few color-correcting stickers in here, but those are mainly relegated to the accessories so the mobile suit goes relatively unscathed. So yeah, those stickers aren't as bad as they look at first glance, and for the most part, this kit looks like it stepped right out of the 2021 movie, Gundam Hathaway. To say this Gundam looks unique is an understatement. It looks like a huge, jacked bug mecha. Absolutely beautiful. When it comes to the accessories, once again, it's sword, board, and beam rifle. Much like the high-grade Nightingale, there are some nice accessories, but they do feel a little like an afterthought compared to the mecha itself. 
The beam sabers in here are the usual affair, but with nice UV reactive green beams. The beam rifle is bulky and does have some nice color separation, but also does require a couple of stickers to be fully color accurate. The shield on the other hand really did get a bum deal and it's pretty much just all in white. The detail on here is nice, so if you didn't know it was meant to have more colors on it, then you probably would let this slide completely or not even notice. All of these do attach on well and do what they need to do with no danger of floppy, droppy parts. Movement-wise, this kit brought a lot more to the table than I was expecting, which is impressive. For a big bulky boy, this thing can move and move quite well. Unlike the Penelope, which turned to jelly quite quickly, eight months later, the Kusi Gundam right here is going strong, a real brick shithouse. On top of that, we do get a bit of a transformation in here, simple and subtle, but it does require a bit of a parts formation, as in two parts have to be removed from the kit, then two more parts added to the model in order to convert it to its flight form. But just like every other aspect of this monolith, it stays rock solid. So if you've seen Gundam Hathaway and need more see Gundam action in your life to tide you over until part 2, then grab yourself the last of the Gundam Giants. <laughs> Floating across the sun and casting a shadow over the number 4 spot is the Master Grade Eclipse Gundam. I heralded this kit as my all-time favorite MG kit. And with Master Grade being my favorite line of Gundam kits, that's saying a lot. And the fact that this doesn't make it number one on the list says even more. This kit came out of nowhere. It was announced and on shelves before he could even digest the fact that Gundam Seed is getting a sequel, albeit a manga. This is a kit whose design has completely polarized the fan base, seeming like everyone either loves it or hates it. But one thing that is for definite is the ridiculous quality of this kit. Based on the frame of an all-time Master Grade great, the Freedom Gundam 2.0, the Eclipse adopts a crazy pointy aesthetic and a transformation based on the cars from the anime, Cars. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, uh, future GPX cyber formula. The Master Grade Eclipse Gundam piloted by Tatsumi Hori from Gundam Seed Eclipse, released in August, retailing at $48. When it comes to the aesthetics, if there is one thing you can say about the Master Grade Eclipse Gundam is that it's unique as hell. Predominantly in white, pointy bits all over the place, head wings, tiny feet, small V-fin, pretty much everything about this is unusual for a Gundam so it does seem to be a love it or hate it suit. But regardless of how you feel about the design, there is no faulting the execution here. Amazing color separation and layering, sharp details, plenty full lining opportunities, and this is one of the very rare Master Grade kits to have fully color separated eyes. And if you hate those tiny little feet, get it in the air and transform those legs into some serious Zone of the Enders vibes. That looks kick ass. Even though this is a kit with an over the top transformation, you wouldn't really know it looking at the mobile suit form as it is hidden quite well. We do get some sticker style decals and the foil stickers are minimal. And to make matters even better, you can jazz up this kit with any Master Grade striker pack that's on the market. This kit is also fully compatible with Master Grade seat handheld equipment, making this a great kit for kit bashing and full on customs. As for the accessories, once again we have the standard Gundam loadout here, but it has been changed so much it's hardly recognizable. Instead of a beam rifle, we have two beam rifles that when they're not in use are almost invisibly hidden on the side skirting armor. Pull out their handles and add the neon green effect parts and you have this kit's answer to the usual beam sabers. But those are anything but usual. The shields on this kit mount on the forearms and have two sets of effects to both attack and protect. And best of all, everything that comes in this kit besides the effect parts can be mounted on the mobile suit when they're not in use. I love that. This kit is heavily based on the Freedom 2.0 frame, so the articulation in here is fantastic. But that does mean that you do have to be careful not to break the hip joints. They're extremely delicate. Some of the bulky armor in here can get in the way of some dramatic poses at times, but considering this is a transforming kit, the build strength and range of movement of the joints is impressive. The transformation does not have any negative impacts on the mobile suit mode, and this kit packs in one of the most involved transformations I have ever seen. So if you like transforming kits, this might be one you want to check out. The transformation to flight form is the perfect combination of intricate but very well designed. Nothing here is janky or difficult and once you get the feel for it, you're flying it. And to sweeten the deal even further, you can still use striker packs when it is transformed to create your own 
perfect flight form. This right here is my new favorite Master Grade kit for a reason, it's 10 out of 10 in every aspect. So whether or not you love or hate the design, I highly recommend building one for yourself. Floating above the Alboa coup that is the third position in this list is the Real Grade Zeong. Just over 10 years since the release of the first ever Real Grade, the Oryx MT-2, this year Zeong feels a bit like the closing of a chapter. How far this line has come in the last decade is astounding, and the application of the RG mantra on the Zeong is a sight to behold. It's big, badass, and over the top. Non-Gundam Gunpla kits are rare, and even rarer when it comes to this exclusive line. So getting the original Gundam Big Bad Guy was quite the treat. With two different versions available, I took a look at the last shooting version that comes with a bunch of effects. But for the sake of this top 10, I'll be ignoring the extras and talking about the core kit, which is still number 3 on the list. The RG Zeong piloted by Shar Aznable from Mobile Suit Gundam, released in January retailing at $52. The Zeong truly is a unique mobile suit. No legs, ear thrusters and antlers. And once again, this is a kit that isn't visually for everyone. Considered a prototype unfinished mobile suit, this is a robot designed for carnage, not looks. But the real great approach of making kits look like they would in reality as opposed to on screen really benefits this design by splitting up the colors into multiple hues, adding hatches, layering, internal structuring, incredible detail, and the usual RG metric ton of stickers. This kit fuses old school cool and modern design to create one of the most intricate small scale mecha around, and a build that feels fresh. Are you one of those people who hates having to build a second leg? Well, that's not a problem here. When it comes to the accessories, the standard box is quite lean, which makes sense. The Zeong is an all-inclusive killing machine that doesn't have any need for beam rifles, shields, and beam sabers. But in here we do get some optional landing gears, as well as a full action base and a pair of wires for displaying the Zeong ready to tear the granddaddy Gundam a new one. If you feel like you need a little bit more Zeong in your life, then the last shooting box features a whole host of dramatic effects, a backdrop, and optional parts for the RG Oryx 78 to display it in the iconic last shooting pose. The classic vibe of the Zeong is it doesn't really move around too much, relying more on its fixed and Saikamu weaponry to do all the work for it. But the amount of articulation that Bandai pumped into this kit is insane. The arms can pose up a storm, fully poseable fingers, huge ab crunch, and the amount of moving parts in the lower section is insane. Moving hatches and thrusters that are intensely expressive. So if you love old school Gundam anime, but don't quite love old school model kits, or you just want to try something completely new, then you might just be wanting a real grade Zeong. Bursting forth from the armor of second place ready to engage the trial system is the two-for-one master grade that is the Virtue and the Nadle. Finally rounding out the Season 1 00 squad, the only question this kit leaves me with is, will they make a Season 2 line of Master Grades because my wallet is ready. This kit right here is Master Grade done perfectly, twice. True to the source material, absolutely astounding in both forms, and the armor sandwiches onto Nadle both perfectly and securely. The only down point to this kit is having to decide which mode to display it in. The Master Grade Nadle, piloted by Tieria Erde from Mobile Suit Gundam 00, released in November at $76. This kit has so much going on that I have to subdivide each of these sections to talk about both modes. First off, the Nadle looks fantastic. Pure pristine white with a splash of red on those cable dreadlocks. Almost looking like a wild white Exia, Bandai did not disappoint with this aspect of the kit. Minimal stickers used only to reflect light through the clear green of the GN condensers. Fantastic layering means that the grey of the inner frame comes through the white armor, giving this kit a multi-faceted surface everywhere. I'll also mention that this kit is compatible with the sold separately LED units. Slap on the armor and now we've got the bulky long-range beast that is the Gundam Virtue. The way the armor attaches onto this kit is sublime, and even the armor itself has been intricately detailed on the internal surface, and dual layered with grey plastic to give it the impression of actual thick armor with heft. And it does actually have heft, weighing more than the massive Master Grade Double Zeta Verka. Thick and powerful, just like it should be. 
Back to the Nadle for the accessories, and once again, this kit impresses by including some Nadle exclusive use equipment. For the Nadle in here, we get the full Gundam loadout, including a beautiful beam rifle, with effect parts for a huge beam bayonet, a very nice shield based on the Gundam Plutone's shield, as well as a pair of beam sabers. We also have the option of using the GN cannons as handheld weapons, just like in the anime, but I will mention that they can be a little bit finicky, used like this. Laying on the armor to create the virtue is an incredibly enjoyable experience, as it is both simple and holds on perfectly. Creating a mobile suit that is so far detached from the Nadle, you would almost forget that it's in there. Last of what we've got in here is the absolutely huge GN Beam Bazooka. This is truly a fully loaded kit. Back to the Nadle now for the articulation, and as cool as those dreads are, they do inhibit the movement of the head. But once you get past this particular aspect, this kit inherits the articulation and the rock-solid build of 2019's epic, Master Grade Gundam Dunamis. Once the armor goes on, this rock-solid build doesn't falter. This is a super heavy tank of a kit. Even considering the added bulk, the Virtue can still bust a decent move, but as you would expect, it's not as agile as the Nadle. So if you love Gundam 00 or just love a kit that does not hold back with the endless options, the Master Grade Virtue will make you an extremely happy builder. But uh, you just might want to buy two. There is no denying it, this is the King of Gumpla. Not just the King of Real Grade, not just the King of this year, this is the single greatest Gundam model kit in existence. This is the Real Grade High New Gundam. This kit has taken the flair and style of the Real Grade New Gundam, combined it with the bulk and structure of the Real Grade Sazabi, to create a Gundam that just oozes style, crams in so many parts, so much detail and so much articulation, but never sacrifices an ounce of integrity. It's big, it's dramatic, it's literally perfect in every way. The build is deceptively simple, so even if you've just started building, don't be afraid of giving this white devil a belt. The real grade Hainu Gundam piloted by Amuro Ray from Shars Counterattack, Beltor Chica's Children, was released in September retailing at $39. First off, Bandai just outright abandoned accurate scale when it comes to this version of the High New Gundam. Supposed to be shorter than its anime equivalent, the New Gundam, they just went and made it huge, and I couldn't be happier. It's a 144th scale, well, maybe not 144th scale, but it's an Adonis of a Gundam. It is gorgeous. Every millimeter of this kit has been painstakingly designed and lovingly crafted. There's detail on detail on detail even on its incredibly intricate inner frame. The part layering is incredible. This kit is a feast for the eyes. When the limbs bend, the armor separates nicely, showing off all the beautiful inner detailing. The wings are huge and expressive. The proportions are stylistic and powerful. And this kit finishes it all off with an intense, intimidating expression. Pure poetry in plastic. In this box, we get the standard Gundam loadout again, plus a bazooka. Everything in here has been given, for the most part, the same awesome attention to detail as the High New itself. The beam sabers are regular enough, but they do store away in a really cool fashion, both in the left forearm and up in some hatches up on the wings. The beam rifle is nicely detailed and attaches on nice and solid, and the same goes for the new Hyper Bazooka. The shield features the same trifecta of white plus two shades of blue just like the rest of the kit, and up on the wings we do have six fin funnels compatible with sold separately effects and stands. And if that isn't enough, you can also get a sold separately Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher. That is one of the hugest 144th scale cannons around. There is also the added bonus that is, the hands of this kit are compatible with the real grade new Gundam, giving you some cool customization options. The combination of articulation, gimmicks, and miscellaneous moving parts in this kit is obscene. I honestly don't believe there's a kit out there that can match the high new Gundam joint for joint, flap for flap, pivot for pivot, or swivel for swivel. This is a posing machine. Combined with its jaw-dropping aesthetics and the huge formidable pair of wings, you can spend hours just eking out the perfect, dramatic pose. Like I said, the real great high new Gundam isn't just the best orgy of this year. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best Gundam model kit of all time. It is a mechanical masterpiece and one you cannot miss. Your collection deserves the King of Gunpla. 
So anyway, that is it for another year and another list of the best Gundam Gunpla of the last 365 days. Sure, this year's catalogue was a little leaner than what we would have seen in previous years, but by no means did Bandai compromise on quality, giving us what can only be described as the alchemical marriage of mechanical engineering and pure, unadulterated artistry. And even though times may have gotten tough and the world's supply chains grind to a halt, they still fight the good fight to bring us the iron giants that have captured our hearts and minds. Model kits that ignite the imagination, that can drown out the world as you lose yourself in a meditative state of snips and snaps. So as usual, this video is dedicated to both those artisans over at Sunrise and Bandai, and to you guys who make all of this possible. To be able to spend my days doing what truly makes me happy, immersing myself in the hobby that I love, and creating videos that hopefully you enjoy and help you make the next decision in your Gunpla building journey. So, thank you so much. And I wish you the absolute best in 2022. If times have been tough, I hope that things turn around and you have the best year of your life. If you're lucky and things are flying high for you, I hope that they just keep on soaring. And of course, I hope that Gunpla collection gets good and fat. It's also hard to believe that 2022 will be the 10th anniversary of this channel. I hope to somehow make it a little bit more special, but don't hold me to that. The minute I make a promise, then it's more likely to never happen. It's pretty much guaranteed it will never happen, so we'll see. So anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll be seeing you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking those who support me here on the channel as members and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, Orgy59061, and Gunpla UK Limited.